Now I'm gonna rally with Katrina. I'm gonna give her a Continental and some driving Continental. We're gonna use the same concept we were talking about a moment ago with that wrist flicking through. And look how my hand stays on top of the racket. It works for all the grips, Continental, Eastern, Semi-Western. A little bit later, I'm gonna to turn to Eastern. And I don't have to lay the racket flat necessarily, but I wanna get that ulnar deviation to drive the ball. If I want to get a lot more spin, we're going to use that ulnar deviation combined with an elbow draw to get a greater snap into the ball. And uh, that racket head speed is going to give the spin, not my deliberate effort to roll. Remember, we're trying to get away from the windshield wiper. And then I may pull out some semi-western with that draw where we are getting it flat, the ulnar deviation, the elbow, and through. Pace of the ball rule is really important. We talked about that earlier, same pace or less. So uh, let me hit a little bit with Katrina and we'll see how that goes. Again, strike zone balls. If the ball is in my strike zone, I'm gonna continue with Eastern when I get there. If it's out of my strike zone, well, I'm gonna go Continental. So let's start with Continental. You can watch me here as I rally with her. We'll go forward from there. Continental's nice too because I can feed her balls. You know, I can pull that to her forehand fairly easily before we start getting more aggressive. Continental. Now I'm going to rally with her with the Eastern, but I'm not going to rally with her if it's not in my strike zone. I'll go back to Continental. So I'm starting in Eastern. I don't want to put a lot of top spin, so you're not going to see the elbow draw, but you should see the ulnar deviation we were talking about. Here we go. So I'm in Eastern. Uh, it's not a strike zone ball. We'll go back. Because I'm, you know, I'm, I'm pinpointing balls. There we go. A little jam on that one. Inside side of the ball is what I'm looking for. A little deep for her. and through as opposed to remember we talked about the mistake everybody makes the rackets back they turn it flat and come through instead at that point we went ulnar deviation and remember the exercise that we're going to use to prevent that from happening that's the big mistake the big mistake bringing the racket back turning it level and then trying to swing in that old windshield wiper we're going to avoid all together should only be in the follow through after. It has nothing to do with the contact. It's a terrible way to try and put top spin on the ball. Where is the energy going? As I come across my body, it's going that way. I need to be driving the ball forward into the court. A couple more here. Hi, Katrina. I use Continental on that one. Continental on that one to give it right back to her. That's a good one. Owner deviation and through. Simple. 
Face of the ball rule. I can get a good drive and I don't have to put anything into it. Owner deviation is true. Real. Continental, it's not in my strike zone. Pushed her back with it. Nice shot. I think it's coming over. Let's start adding that elbow draw. So you can see that. Now this is with the Eastern, and this is where I think we can get more depth in the semi-Western. But we're gonna get that elbow draw to start putting more topspin on the ball. Base of the ball roll. Same pace or less. That doesn't mean I'm adding velocity to get it across the court, but I'm using that technique to help my racket head speed go up. So here we go. So, ulnar deviation, but a little bit of elbow, and I got too anxious on that one. I wanted to demonstrate it. Here we go. Easter, little elbow, and there's the extra racket head speed. You can see how that jump actually went over the fence as it landed on the Brett's racket. I didn't need to do much. Which is really the point. I don't want to add more effort into my swing, I want to let the technique do the work more. Nice. Excellent. Look at that volley. Mid court. There we go. A little racket head speed because I drew the elbow back. It's a perfect one. Racket head speed. Drop back. level of effort by using a technique of drawing the elbow to make up for where most people are muscling. I don't want to do that. So again, it's changing, it's redefining it, you know, rather than how strong, if I, if I want to use all my strength, I, I, it would be out of control. We want a technique that's doing it for us. Adds velocity, adds racket head speed, but I don't need to do that physically. Technique does it. Here we go, Continental, because it's not on my strike zone. Continental, not on my strike, oh, missed that one. semi-western. Fence. Slide. The rack is down. Elbow and through. Here we go. I've learned that the inconsistency with most of my students with the semi-western, it's almost not worth using it in the backcourt because inherently it's short. So I actually, funny thing, I teach them to use it in the midcourt as an approach shot, go to semi-western and use it, that heavy top spin as they're approaching the net. It's a little bit more accurate because inherently if it's shorter, they're not gonna hit it long. If you're hitting along from the baseline, use it. If you're not, you should be going Eastern. Eastern, opening that face a little bit is gonna give you the depth. 